a stamper gainer again sorry about a mocky board but you know what they say mocky stamper right i was sent a challenge by the gorgeous 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 carla bostick who sent me a, a, a link to a lady's video and i forget her name now but I couldn't understand a word she was going on about this poor lady was trying to explain something and she was talking really fast. Um, oh, what was that? I can't think of her name. Oh, gosh, it's bugging me. But um, it, it was two techniques rolled into one. So I went away and I thought, I can't, I just couldn't get my head around the, the one the lady was making. Obviously, we all know what a Z-fold card looks like. But this one is with the added bonus of a having a box with it uh, and I'll explain and show you in a minute um, but uh, like I say I could not get my head around her measurements I mean I don't do metric as it is or, or centimeters and all that and it was really bugging me so I wanted to go away and make my own so I have so it is it's called a Z fold box card and it does lie flat uh, there's a tiny little bit over poke there, but I'm sure it will still fit in an envelope. Let me just check. Oh, I've only just spotted it, see? So let me get my envelope. Oh, yes, that's going to fit in an envelope. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, with a little bit of space either side as well. Perfect. And there's space down the bottom as well. So, yes, it will fit in a normal size envelope. Yay! <laughs> But, and this is the box bit inside. Isn't that clever? I put a third one in, but it ended up being too close to here. But you can still stick items to this part. So I'll add the two. The third one you won't need, because if you want to put any more on, you can add them back here. And the, I've got a floating reef and these beautiful hanging stockings. I was going to put six on there, but it would have just looked jammed. I love this suite. I know it's retired, but uh, oh, I just love it. And it stands up lovely. And what you want it, this is the only thing the tree is poking up, but as you've just seen, still fits in an envelope. And when you open it right out, there's that gorgeous Christmas stick tree. And I used some shimmer spray over the top. I added some um, dazzling diamonds, not dazzling diamonds, wink of Stella to some of the presents. And to the stockings, you can still see a little bit of shimmer on the stockings. Just cute as a button. Um, and then the shimmer spray on the tree, which is absolutely gorgeous. And I used the farmhouse, a festive farmhouse design series paper. I just love this wood textured feel to a living room. So it reminded me of a log cabin actually. So yeah, it's a long card. It's gonna take ages. I have stamped, coloured and die cut all my pieces because we would, it's take, it. this card took me three and a half hours to make with all the stamping. That, mind you, that was two lots of stamping, two lots of colouring, two lots of die cutting. I mean, these baubles, I think I've cut about 20, 26, 28, something like that. And then two lots of presents. And I even did two lots of pictures for the two cards but you're only going to need one set so isn't that just so darn cute and I'm loving that sharing sharing the joy at Christmas and always I just love it and I, I love these Z fold cards anyway and look at the little stockings uh, and thank the, there is you can see the acetate a little bit but I'm not fussed on that one right let's get going because we need a lot of pieces ta-da right I'm using Pear Pizzazz because uh, it's a nice subtle green without being too in your face. I'm using thick white cardstock. These are both cut at 11 inches long. They've got to be exactly the same size. Tiny little bit of overkill, but we can trim that off at the end. And this is 4 and 1 8 uh, by 11, and this is 2 by 11. Let me just check. I have cut them off. Yes, I have. And now I design it. You're only going to need uh, two of these now, not three, as I painstakingly found out. <laughs> so, and we're going to do some scoring. But this is, ooh, three and seven eighths 
actually this yeah three and seven eighths by five and a quarter you'll need two of these then which both measure exactly the same and these are two and a half by three and seven eighths and then we're going to have our panel here and you're going to need these these are two and a half by one and seven eighths you'll need two of those and this is one and seven eighths by five and a quarter so it's just to layer up so we're going to score and layer and get going now with these two cards i've chose to keep it at 11. i normally do a whole sheet of a4 fold it and fold it again but then you've got the, the weirdest measurements so we're sticking to 11 so i'm going to score this at two and three quarters and five and a half and we're going to do exactly the same with this piece so two and three quarters five and a half and what I'm going to do I'm going to flip this over and score this again because this is really thick cardstock and it's going to bend the other way so you can basically just fold it over make sure your ends join and then flip this one back and make sure your ends join so let's grab this pop it down i'm sorry i've done all the cutting and, and stuff beforehand but i'm literally i can only film for a, a maximum i think two hours of my camera and surely you don't want to watch me sit for two hours and make a card so this is going this way for us so we're going to fold our card over as well making sure the ends stay together then they line up lovely. And you want a nice deep score line. And then fold this one back on itself again, making sure you nice deep crease. And do you know how you get where you cut at the top of your card and you get these little just take your bone folder. I mean that mine's fraying a little bit because my blade needs changing, but just go along the, the sides, the top, wherever you've trimmed and flatten it out and it looks a lot smoother. Isn't that lovely? Because normally when you cut a piece of card, it kills the paper up and uh, we don't want any of that, so nice and smooth. Say like there now, watch, see this, how rough it looks. See if I can get you to see it. Looks curled up. Just take your bone folder and smooth it back down, and it comes really nice and neat. There we go. So that's another tip for you when you're cutting your card. So, ooh, where am I? That's it. Our card is going on like this, as always with the Z fold card. There's nothing new about those. But it's that little inner box we're going to do. So I'm going to get layering up. I'm going to start with my inner pieces. And I'm just for speed, I'm going to use my tape runner. And we just want to get this in. Because these pieces aren't moving, we're going to use this to adhere most things down. But when it comes to the mechanics, we're going to use tear tape because with the card opening and closing in the centre and going on with all that uh, movement, we are going to make sure it doesn't come apart with our wonderful tear tape. And basically, it's, you can decorate these however you want. You can use snowmen, Santa Claus, little kids, um, you know, anything you want. I just love this Christmas set. So I thought there was a little hanging stock, and that little wreath came from a magazine. I had a, a little wreath uh, building stamp set with four dies, so that's how I made that little wreath. It's not stamping up. Like I say, if you've got it, use it. And I love these wood knots in here. I think they're amazing. Perfect, so now we're going to layer our bottom bits. Whoops, there we go. I love this. 
and you could do this. I'm doing this as a Christmas card. You could do a birthday card with loads of balloons. You can do one with gorgeous flowers poking out the side. You know, it's it's endless what you can do with a card that, like this. And for any occasion as well. You could do it with a christening card for a baby with little booties and uh, baby grows so they're hanging. And just floating in that little box area. When you're lining your paper up on here, there is a little board all the way around. Just try and keep it as level top and bottom as possible and then it will all fall into place nicely. You don't want one higher than the other. So using it as a guide, just make sure you pop that into place. And don't forget to turn it round because if you remember last time, I ended up doing one like that and it was wrong, so we need that to be there. I'm just making sure that this is what's going to give you a little box action. So I know that's close up to the edge. So we're going a little overkill, but we'll trim that off at the end. Absolutely love it. So I'm going to do my stamping quickly. I'm using um, Poppy Parade. I think it's a gorgeous red colour and it's perfect for a festive card. And we've got that Sharing the Joy. I'm just going to line my paper up and I'm going to pop this right towards the top. Lovely, nice and crisp. At Christmas and always. Isn't that beautiful? And that's going right up here in this top corner. Oh, perfect. Love it. And that's all, well, there's, it's not all the stamping. <coughs> It's the stamping I'm going to choose to do today because, uh, like I say, I've got my little tub here ready. I've got a box that keeps wanting to fall over under my feet. I have cut out the staircase, which you're going to glue on to here. You can move your tree. You can put your tr You could. Oh, you could put that there, but then that would look a bit silly having a staircase at the end of your card. You could probably might just get away with putting it there. You, I would think you could as long as you made sure it's tucked into that corner so you could uh, close the card. You'd have a little bit of overhang but I'm just going to choose to keep the same layout and what I'm doing I'm not lining the stairs up right at the very bottom there I'm lining it up with the designer series paper, so I've still got my little edge going all the way around. It looks nice and nice and trimmed then. What do you reckon? Or should we go to the corner? I uh, did a darker staircase on this one. No, I like that white little border going all the way around. I think we're going to stick to that. Oh, by the way, these are, are just scraps. You can use any colour you want. Um, and I chose the very vanilla because I'm not fussed on it. So maybe it's hidden, it's hidden. And what I did, I, t I put my card, let me just show you quickly. Oops. Into my trimmer. At two. But I went and I kept it behind the line. So it's shorter. You could perhaps take it down to the one sixteenth. I just, I mean, it's nothing, it's that. And then you can smooth this out with your bone folder again. But it's got to be just a mil or two smaller. So that's what I did. And the same with this one. I just left it behind and then chopped it off. And they are. Uh, three and three quarters because we're going to score these at half inch either side. <clears throat> we'll get to that bit in a moment. 
So I'm going to add, I'm going to use glue because I like the glue. And you can tell I've got, look, I even overkilled my, uh, so what you're going to do, measure, so I'm keeping it on the white, so I know I can glue all the way up to there, oops, let me get this in place, all the way up to there with my staircase and straight along. So basically, just below the banister there I can glue to. If I keep my line just for there, whoops, that's a bit much, it's oozing out, and then I can come across here. Cool, that's flowing out nice and uh, and now I'm going to line that up right against that. Do you know, I've never made, I've done box, I have never made a box car before on, on camera anyway. Um, so this gave me the opportunity to do two cards in one go, so I'm not really fussed on, I can't, well I'm not saying that, I love receiving pop-up cards with the box elements but um, I'm going to pop this to one side just for a moment I'm going to what, oh, where's my little tub gun there so I've cut four pieces of acetate because I know that's how many pieces I've got of uh, stuff I've got left over uh, these are literally hot and this is the strong one that's stamping up uh, cell and they're like three and three quarters. We don't need them that long. We're going to trim them off as, so we get different heights on the stockings. There's that lovely little wreath that came with this, uh, the magazine. You're going to need the dog, the table, and the cookies. I can find them. There they are. And I use my little gold gel pen to give it a little gold plate. And this, it's literally just a piece of scrap. And I've cut it into the shape of a V so it looks like the bottom of the bucket for the Christmas tree. So that's the, that's what that's for. So I'm just going, I'm just going to keep, like I say, the layout's going to be exactly the same. It's not the best shape. I just literally cut a square and then chop the sides off. <laughs> and my tree then is, it fits in that gap perfectly. But I don't want it too high up. So I'm just using this. I need it to come down a little bit. So I don't mind it poking out a little bit, but not all the way. So that tree's got a so you can still see the pot underneath. I'm just going to grab my spray as well. And I'm going to add some shimmer to my tree. Just for two seconds. And I'm going to leave that because it curls up a little bit. But it dries in no time and you can straighten it back out. I've got shiny fingers now. Look. Oh. Good stuff. I think... I've used that bottle so many times. Right, now the garland running down the staircase. I'm just going to add dots of glue. Don't go all the way to the bottom because it doesn't fit. It leaves it off. So you can go all the way down to the second one in. Or you can add a tiny little, just add dots. That's all you need because you don't want it to smudge out. Because when you put your card down, you don't want this to spread out and stick to the back of your card. Mind you, it's already stuck that side. So that's on there. If you notice here, this panel is away from here. But if you wanted to just tack a bit of glue behind there, you could do. So that's my garland attached. I'm going to put my little bits on the desk now. You don't need all of the pictures. So I'm just removing one of each. And I'm going to grab three of my lovely little stockings. And I'm just adding a dot at the top and just a tiny little bit there. 
so we can attach the stocking. Perfect. And I'm going to go every other one. So tiniest little dot. And if you feel confident after, you can always uh, add more glue and glue it to that last panel. But we've got a few things to do before we get to that last panel going down. So my last stocking is going right there. Whoops. You could add dimensionals. I think this card is thick enough as it is when it's closed. You don't want to be adding more bulk to it because it might not go through the letterbox. So I've got this lovely bit of, uh, oh, what's it called now? Oh, getting my head if it's loose. Well, these are off the trims off the side of the dimensionals on the mini ones just so I can keep my table in the right place. So I'm going down the centre of the leg. And then either side of just a tad. I don't mind my table and my little bow wow uh, being on dimensionals because it just looks so cute. And I've coloured everything exactly the same. You could do one and check apart from the staircase. That one is uh, this one's lighter. And I stamped the set out and then realised I didn't need to. That's it. So I've gum in a little bit on here because some people do have end tables in the hallway, especially when they've got guests coming around for Christmas. Just love it. I'm going to add two dimensionals on there. But yeah, I stamped two tables, two staircases, two trees, and I've left so it looks like it's actually sitting on the actual table there. Isn't that cute? There's no white lip. And then this gorgeous little pooch. Oh, he's just divine. Love him. So cute. I'm just dumping all my rubbish down the side here for now. We'll clear this away later. And he is so, and he's poking his little nose up, having a little sniff. Oh, he's not, he's being a good boy. He's not actually pinching, he's just being inquisitive. So now my tree is dry. Look at the sparkle, if I can catch the light now. Look at that. Just beautiful. And I'm gluing the tree flat. So I'm just going to... I can go to here, so I'm just going down here. And this glue is really strong and I know it's not going to come off. I know none of it's going to come off. So so I'm basically in between the score lines. So I know that my card will open and close. Isn't that good? You could always cut two and glue uh, another one at the back. Or just stamp the back as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Isn't that starting to look cute as a button? Yay! So, what have we got here? Right, these are my presents. That's a picture. They're my three pictures there for my top bit of the card. And I'm having a present, a present stacked on top. This one by the side. And I'm going to have the same over in this corner as well. Stack of presents. I've used that gel, gold gel pen to add some colour to these. And where have they gone? I got a bow, 
one there and I've got one there. In fact, I've got two of the small ones to go on top of my presents. So again, I'm just adding glue. I'm going to put this one down first because it's nice and square. Make sure your bows and tags and ties are at the right, going the right way. Perfect. But it's worth taking your time over this pres uh, this card because it. I just had so much fun making it this afternoon. But I mean, three hours and maybe three, say three and a half, and I've only going to have two cards. So that's the what you've got to think about. So I'm going to add on these little bows on the top. But I suppose if you do it for someone real special in your life. Um, I think they would really appreciate how much hard work you put into your cards and they probably treasure them for a very long time because I know I do with mine. I hate throwing anything away, especially if someone's gone, especially homemade things. Someone has spent so much time making you a beautiful card. There's no way after Christmas it's going in the bin. <laughs> so we're slowly getting there. Oh, flipping it. And I'm just going to rest this one on top of here. And I'm keeping on quite close. I may even add my ribbon on the top maybe because I couldn't get a star on the top and I, I've lost my star at this stamp set I've got the die I just haven't got the actual stamp no one will ever know where that's gone because there's only me that uses it and I haven't got a clue so there's those lovely presents all laden down isn't that starting to look fabulous um, spare bow. What I do now with my spare pieces, just pop them back in there and put them inside the stamp set when you're finished and uh, you will have them if you come to make another card so that's a good idea for me. Right, I bunched my uh, pictures up and then realised I should just spread them out a little bit so I'm going to add this one Probably just about here. You can ha add dimensionals to these. Um, I may even have a little present. A present. Uh, I may even add a, a pick one here as well because you will see it once the card is open. And I'm going to pop these down with glue. Because they're holiday pictures, obviously. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw like a little circle for a tack and then just put some cord down so it looks like it's hanging off the wall. Same with this one as well. I love these cards that make you have to stretch your imagination and fill in the blanks as I call it. I love cards like that. Again. Isn't that cute? Oh, so cute. Love it. And our last picture. This is our gold snowflake. And I'm going to pop this one right about here. That is so adorable. Don't they look so cute hanging on the wall there? <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, it's swig of coffee time. Hubby's made me a cup of coffee, he's a darling. You can guarantee it'll go cold on me though. So, what we're going to do now, I'm using dimensionals for this. So, what I'm going to do, you couldn't see it, so I'm going to try. Still get rid of the bits that are poking out. So I'm just basically going to add 
one right down the very bottom. You may see a tiny little bit poking through, but uh, it doesn't matter. And then I'm going to attach these to my uh, windows. We need to score these as well, so I'm just getting, I'm just prepping everything ready. So I'm going to add a dimensional. on the toe of my stockings so they can uh, and I'm just making sure they just go over the top but I want some oh it's actually you, you will adjust the strips not the not the actual stocking but add the toes to the top so they look like they're floating. You could perhaps even go even thinner, you could perhaps do a quarter of an inch. But uh, that's entirely your preference. And what I'm going to do is we're going to have some behind the panel and, the one, and one in front so they just look like they're floating there. Ever seen floating stockings? No, we have now. <laughs> so this was the center of my beautiful uh, snowflake and what I did is I just attached it right near one of these sentiments so perhaps I could put it there and I'm just gonna glue this down. I just didn't want to throw it in the bin I thought it was so cute. Just gonna pop that. I even tried to stick it to the top of the tree, but it's stuck too far up over the top. So that now is our back bit. I'm just gonna get rid of my bits because I'll probably end up sticking to my elbow. Right now for our other set. Isn't that cute? Oh my gosh, I love this. So we're gonna get. We're gonna use tear tape on here. make sure I'm lifted up so you can see. I do apologise. I do get carried away sometimes. You want the strength of this because this is the bits are going to open and close, open and close. I mean, I used two or three strips on the other one. I'm going to fairly fill this one now because I definitely don't want this coming off. One more strip. I think that little wreath thing came a couple of months back with the, the, the other magazine I had. It's been there, sat on my desk for a while, so I know I haven't used it. So we're going to peel, oops. going to peel back our strips. And you always rub down to make sure your glue is really really stuck down to your card so when you lift the backing off that's all you're taking off is the backing you don't want that glue lifted up perfect so I'm just gonna spin my card now I'm going to take this, it's got to go right up to the edges on here. So just leave, use your finger so it can't go any further. And make sure it's lined all the way up properly. And then it sticks down right along that baseline there. And you need to press. That is perfect. Beautiful. So. Then you're going to uh, close your card. When we glue this later, you've got to make sure it's literally straight as a die. We're going to have a little bit of overkill. We can trim that off at the end. So fold this back on itself and just pop this 
to one side for a second. I'm just going to score these two pieces of card and you need to score them at half inch at both ends. So I'm going to do it this side. So that is three and three quarters, so three and a half a quarter. Make sure you push it into the corner. Three and a quarter, so that's half inch. Ooh. And just fold one one way and fold the on the other way. Do the same, fold forward and then fold back. You know, I'm so heavy handed. I think that one is going to break. I think it might, you know. I did have a spare one there, so I'm just going to redo that because I don't want my card falling to pieces. And I press too hard, did you see? So this is three and three. And what I want to do now is flip it over so I know I can score it the other way. Because when you go both ways, you have the tendency to be able to crack. So that one can go that way. And this one can come this way. So yeah, do that instead. And you get a nice, clean, crisp score on both sides. Now these are what you're going to need tear and tape on as well. So go as close as you can to the score line, but not too close. And then flip and add. Is that right? That looks good. No, it's just me and my eyesight. My wonky eyesight. And you're going to do the same on your other piece. You know, like the... Um, oh. What card did we do? Oh, the, the, the box card with the hearts come home. The, 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 the diorama box. This is the same principle as that. Because we're adding a, a graduation. So, right. Come back in with your card now. Oh, I'm losing everything there. So, you are going to need these pieces to lay flat whoops on there so you don't want it right up to the score line but you need it right down the bottom so you've got that so it's quite just slightly smaller than this and then we're going to add one so we're going to add that there you've got to make sure they line up perfectly at the bottom and then this one, we're going to add, I'm going to use that as my guideline. And that is going to go down, making sure this flap is down, so it's like this. And then when we come, let's just stick them down. Right, Dana, peel the back off. Explain as you go along. If you've got any overhang, just tuck it in. So, this is our corner. And I'm going to, I'm going to add it into the corner, but I'm going to make sure my corner is able to open and close for when we push down the card. So it's all neat and level with the bottom of the card. And then we're going to do exactly the same with this one. Got to make sure it's level at the bottom, and I'm using this as the, score, as the the guideline. If that's a little bit over, I'm going to trim that because uh, I've, it's got a bit of overkill on the bottom. So, just going to grab my scissors because I don't want it poking out. So you 
got to be perfect and make sure you line it up so nothing sticks out the bottom. So now we can peel the backings off and we're going to attach this section over there. You'll understand why in a moment. Keeping those little flaps down. And we're going right along that edge. So when we open the card up now, we've got those two little sections in there. That are going to be your box section. Like I say, I added the third one, but it ended up being at the back of the box there. So you could line them up next to each other. You could add, add this one there, the next one behind there, and the next one behind there. And so you could have, you could have literally one, one, two, three, even four rows, leaving a little gap here if you want to really bulk out your card. So that's that. That's how we did that. So we laid it flat, giving us that box section. And now all we need to do is add our tear and taper on the back and stick that down. And then we can go to our little ornaments and the other bits. Oops, that's it. So I know I can come down here these lined up getting as close as I can to that edge I'm gonna add two strips now one here and one more here and that way I know it's not gonna go too high And I can always close that and now I'm not hanging over the head, the edge, the hedge. So, don't forget to burnish so your backing will come off easy. All you've got to do is lay this down, making sure you're keeping along that edge. Perfect. That's nice and straight. And we know about the overkill. Oh, look at that. I've gone a bit wonky down the bottom. Oh, guarantee. Always happens on camera. It doesn't happen anywhere else, just on camera. <laughs> I got it perfectly straight on the first one. Don't worry about that. Right, so now we know, look. And if you fold it this way and give it a press, you know that your card will stay flat. Just that tiny little bit over. I added a bauble on that one right at the very top. So now we can uh, add these. Oh my gosh, how cute is this? Love it, love it, love it. Right, uh, let us let me show you these first. So you're going to stand that in. You don't want anything taller than the card. I cut these at three and three quarters, but um, I'm going to take a half inch off that. About that. This is where you play around and adjust things and now I can add my dimensional on the back. Take off the back in. And I'm gonna look now and see. I want that pretty high up and in the center. Squeeze now, 
and there is one item added. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I'm going to literally chop this one the same length. And I'm going to add... I'm going to add my dimensional on the back because the other two I'm going to add on the front. So these one stands, two stand further back than the other one. And this is going in the front. I don't want it all the way down there, so... Oops. I want this a lot shorter than the others, but not too short. Maybe there. And then just press it into place. Now the other two, I'm going to shorten slightly and have them at the front. So they're at the, f the back, sorry. So they st so they just staggered a bit, if you get my meaning. So I'm going to trim this down a little bit. And I'm going to do this one at the same length. And then I'm going to add my dimensions at the front. then we can adjust these instead of this one being at the front we're going to add these at the back without making sure that our stockings are not poking over the top perfect so where have I added that one I can go in whoops and just Line that up. And there's my little stockings. Yay! Oh, focus. That's so cute. So, that's all that we need for the dimensionals. I am going to be gluing my little baubles down. I'll just check. Oh, we're doing plenty of time. So, get rid of the skirts because I've left it open whilst we've been filming. I shouldn't have. And then just a little tiny dot you want and if you get too much just grab another one and then just start placing them where you want them and I'm having one right at the top again because I couldn't get a little star to fit well actually I lost my star I'm going to add those later I'm just going to you know basically show you it was the mechanism I wanted to show you this little bauble's got a little bit missing at the bottom which I'm not going to be phased about because I'm going to have this one. So it looks like the presents are standing up in front of them. So if you ever get any damaged ones, now you can't tell it's not round. So grab Winkostella. And what I did, I just dotted the baubles, uh, the glass on the, the Christmas tree lights. Added some stripes of Winkostella down the green and on the bow. Same on this one. Just to help sparkle them up. And then on the other card, I glittered all the green, but this one I'm going to glitter all the red. And it doesn't take long at all. You could add rhinestones to your tree. You could add, um, if you've got any, tinsel. Make yourself some tinsel. You can go really over the top with these. You could have a little Santa sign there saying, Santa, stop here. Because kids like them in the hallways, don't they, all that? on the front doorstep and that. So I've just added my Winker Stella. Oh my gosh. And all the way over the Santa's letter. It's beautiful. 
And that's it. I'm going to finish off adding my baubles to my card. So we know it opens right out. And we also know it closes shut as well. Like I was saying, stamp another tray or even just stamp over the tray so you can see the back. And that will still fit in our envelope. Perfect. And you've got space all the way around. So it's an exceptionally large card that fits into a regular size envelope. Oh, I hope you enjoy. Whoops. There we go. Oh, what was sticking? Something catching. Ah, oh, the little... Uh, dimensional so what I'm going to do to that the dimensional that's poking through I'm just going to grab a rhinestone and put that over the top no one knows it's there but now it's going to stop that card from sticking no clicking no more that's fabulous absolutely fabulous so oh and what I did for the little puppy dog just grab my journaling pen and just darkened his little eye back up. And his little mouth and his little nose. Oh, that's so sweet. And that lovely. So I'm going to carry on putting them on. Like I said, I would love a thumbs up and a share. Uh, if you didn't like, please give me a thumbs down as well. And a nice comment to say why you didn't like. So I can improve my cards. So you get a better view in next time you pop in. So, thanks for watching. Oh, and if you haven't subscribed already, I'd really love that. But you can do that by pressing this button down here. And if you want to see what I make tomorrow, press the little bell straight after you. And you'll be notified of all future videos. And I'm hoping to keep you all entertained over the next few months with all the Christmas season going on. I absolutely adore this time of the year. So... Thanks for watching. Till next time. Bye.